coming up tonight, a longtime Gamecock starter enters the transfer portal. Later, turmoil among SEC heavyweights. And finally, trouble brewing in Carolina. What's next for the Panthers tonight? These stories and more on Palmetto State Sports. From the Blue Ridge Mountains and through the Midlands down to the coast, there's plenty of sports highlights and moments here in South Carolina. There's only one place where you'll catch all the action. This is Palmetto State Sports. Welcome to Palmetto State Sports. I'm Spencer Ball. And I'm Violet Raftery. Thank you for joining us tonight. After the recent bye week, fifth year safety R.J. Roderick has left the Gamecocks football program and entered the transfer portal. Here's what Coach Shane Beamer had to say about the matter in yesterday's press conference. R.J. is not a part of the team uh, anymore. Uh, he's, uh, I'll let R.J. speak for himself, but right now he's not a member of this football team and, and uh, uh, won't be going forward. Roderick sustained an injury in the season opener against Georgia State and has seen minimal playing time since then. Before last Saturday, the Palmetto State had two undefeated representatives, but now only the Tigers are yet to suffer defeat. On Saturday, the Chanticleers hosted the Old Dominion Monarchs in a game they were favored to win by over a touchdown. However, once the game got underway, it was clear to see the Chanticleer defense had no answer for Blake Watson. The Monarch running back ran for a school record 256 yards and three touchdowns, powering them to a 49-21 victory. Meanwhile, the Tigers managed to stave off a comeback from the Florida State Seminoles in Tallahassee to remain a perfect 7-0. However, Clemson's stretch of tough games is not over as they will host the undefeated Syracuse Orange in the Upstate this Saturday at noon on ABC. University of South Carolina women's tennis player Sarah Hamner defeated Duke University's Cameron Mora in three sets on Monday to win the title of ITA Carolina Region Champion. Hamner is only the second player in program history and the first since Michelle Dutta in 1988 to win this title. Hamner was ranked second in the Intercollegiate Tennis Association's preseason evaluation going into her sophomore year. This ranking follows what was an impressive freshman season for Hamner, in which she was recognized as both the SEC Freshman of the Year and the ITA Carolina Region Rookie of the Year. Hamner was also named to the SEC Academic Honor Roll for 2022. Gamecock Women's Tennis will host their only event at home this season, the Gamecock Shootout, next weekend from Friday the 28th until Sunday the 30th. This past Saturday, the Hall of Fame Committee of the Wofford College Terrier Club Board of Directors honored nine new inductees into their Athletic Hall of Fame. The college defines their inductees as former student athletes who, quote, have made lasting significant contributions to the cause of sports at Wofford College, the Spartanburg community, South Carolina, and the nation, end quote. The inductees include former men's basketball stars, class of 2015, Lee Skinner, Class of 2016, Spencer Collins, and Class of 2017, Eric Garcia. The Class of 2017 had six total inductees with former soccer player Matthew Arednik, golfer Andrew Novak, tennis player Harris Porrick, and football players Lorenzo Long and Anton Warby making up the remaining five. Long still holds Wofford's record for carries in a single season with 294. And the final inductee was Class of 2016 baseball star Will Stillman, who was drafted in the sixth round by the San Diego Padres and played for their organization at the single A level from 2016 to 2018. The Wofford College Terrier Club also recognized Je Jeff Sarvis with the Distinguished Service Award and Dolores Chandler as an honorary letterman. Both Sarvis and Chandler are board of directors lifetime members. Complete coverage of the ceremony can be found on the Wofford Terriers YouTube channel. It's really interesting to see, you know, a ceremony like this happen in the Palmetto State. It's great to see some of the famous athletes from Wofford get recognized. Yeah, it's absolutely great to see them recognized, honored, and just highlight a whole bunch of different sports. I believe there were six different sports covered with that ceremony. Coming up, SGTV News 4 reporter Connor Fisher will give us a glimpse at the sports world outside the Palmetto State. Welcome back, Gamecock fans. Sports doesn't just happen here in the Palmetto State. Here's what's going on around the country. On Monday, the Panthers finalized a trade with the Arizona Cardinals, sending veteran wide receiver Robbie Anderson out to the desert. This trade follows Anderson's ejection from the Panthers' 24-10 loss to the Los Angeles Rams this weekend. 
This drama happened just nine days after the Panthers fired Matt Rule and elevated Steve Wilkes to interim head coach. Rule had a record of 11 wins and 27 losses as the head coach for Carolina, including this season's 1-4 start. Anderson might not be the only player on his way out of Carolina. According to NFL insider Ian Rappaport, while the team views wide receiver DJ Moore and running back Christian McCaffrey as building blocks for the future, they would, would listen to trade offers. As of today, the Panthers are projected to have the number one overall selection in next spring's NFL draft. Last night, the NBA kicked off their regular season with big marquee matchups. The defending champion Golden State Warriors took on the Los Angeles Lakers and received their championship rings, earning a double-digit win over L.A. to cap off the night. Tonight, the Charlotte Hornets begin their season against the San Antonio Spurs at 8 p.m. Next, it's Orlando on Friday before finishing the week with a Sunday night matchup against the Atlanta Hawks. Finally tonight, four teams remain in the MLB playoffs with a ticket to the World Series on the line. The divisional round was driven by upsets, especially on the National League side of the draw. First, the defending World Series champion Atlanta Braves were defeated by the Philadelphia Phillies in four games. Then across the country, the San Diego Padres beat the Los Angeles Dodgers, who had won 100 games plus this season and was the National League's number one seed. The American League Championship Series will have familiar faces with the New York Yankees and the Houston Astros going head to head. The number one seed Astros swept Seattle in their divisional series, while the Yankees needed five games to dispatch the Cleveland Guardians. As of right now, the Padres lead the Phillies six, games, six runs to two in game two of the NLCS, and first pitch for game one of the ALCS is in just a few moments. That's the Pro Sports Rundown for this week. Coming up after the break, there was chaos in the SEC over the weekend. What went down on Rocky Top after the break? I'm Connor Fisher, and we'll be right back. Welcome back, I'm Colleen Schultes. Well, while South Carolina had a bye week this past weekend, all eyes were on another SEC East team, the Tennessee Volunteers. The number six ranked Vols defeated the number three ranked Alabama Crimson Tide 52 to 49 in a hard fought battle all the way to the last second where Chase McGrath kicked a game winning field goal. Knoxville, Tennessee erupted immediately as students and fans rushed the field, tore down the goalposts and took the goalposts to the river in celebration. The Vols had been defeated by Alabama since 2006, but ended that streak Saturday night. The Hendon Hooker Jalen Hyatt duo was unstoppable. Hyatt, a South Carolina native, had five touchdowns in 207 yards. History was definitely made. And Hyatt is from Irmo, South Carolina, like 20 minutes away from here. It's such a shame he doesn't play here at South Carolina. I know I'd like it a lot better if he was wearing the garnet and black, but <laughs> overall just a great game for a college football fan to watch this weekend. Absolutely. Now the reigning women's basketball national champions took to the mic yesterday afternoon during SEC media days. Joining head coach Don Staley was senior forward Aaliyah Boston and senior guard Zaya Cook. After the AP poll ranked the Gamecocks number one going into the regular season, here's what Coach Staley had to say about her team and this season. Because um, once, you, once you've won and you, re, you return basically, you know, almost your your entire team, um, you you tend to you tend to want to take the uh, the beginning part of it, the journey, the 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 meat and potatoes of the season um, lightly. Staley is anything but cocky going into this season and she expects her and the team to work just as hard, if not harder than last year. The Gamecocks hope op home opener is set for November 7th against East Tennessee State at 8.30 p.m. in Colonial Life Arena. And I'm just really excited to see the, the national champions ranked number one, see how they really do this season. Yeah, especially returning as much talent as they are, it's gonna be awesome to watch. Yep. Coming up after the break, what Carolina sporting events are going on this week. Stay tuned for the Palmetto State calendar. Before we go, let's take a look at the Palmetto State calendar. Starting off with some volleyball, the Gamecocks just tipped off against the Mississippi State Bulldogs moments ago here in Columbia. On Sunday, they traveled to Baton Rouge at 2 p.m. to take on LSU on the SEC Network. The Tigers will host Syracuse Friday at 7 p.m. Two days later, they will stay at home for a matchup against Boston College at 1 p.m. The Chanticleer volleyball team will play back-to-back -back at James Madison on Thursday and Friday with both games at 6 p.m. To move on to some men's soccer matchups, the Gamecocks head to Norfolk to take on Old Dominion tonight at 7 p.m. on ESPN+. Later in the week, they return home to Columbia to host James Madison at 3 p.m. on Sunday. 
On Friday, the Tigers will travel to Louisville to play the Cardinals at 7 p.m. And they're in action again on Monday, this time back at home as they take on UMass at 7 p.m. And for Coastal Carolina, they are in Lexington tonight as they take on Kentucky at 7 p.m. They'll return home to play Old Dominion also at 7 p.m. on Sunday. Moving on to the women's soccer matchups for the week, the Gamecocks will host Texas A&M tomorrow night at 7 p.m. They will travel to Knoxville to face the 18th ranked Volunteers at 1 p.m. on Sunday. The Tigers will play host to Duke tomorrow at 7 p.m. They will have another game at home on Sunday at 1 p.m. as they will play the Eagles of Boston College. And finally, Coastal Carolina will host Marshall at 7 p.m. tomorrow night. On Sunday, they'll travel to Mobile, Alabama to take on South Alabama at 1 p.m. Now let's check out the football games for this upcoming week. The Gamecocks will host Texas A&M under the lights at 7.30 p.m. on the SEC Network on Saturday. The Tigers will host Syracuse this Saturday at noon on ABC in a huge ACC Atlantic matchup. And the Chanticleers have a bye week. That's all we have for tonight's edition of Palmetto State Sports. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at SGTV Sports. And to keep up with all of our content, be sure to also visit us online at SGTVOnline.com. For SGTV News for Sports, I'm Violet Raftery. And I'm Spencer Ball. From all of us here at SGTV, have a great night, Carolina. Forever, Forever to, to be. be.